Hi guys, I'm Edmund. I'm one of the academic officers of the University of Warwick Computing Society. And today, I'm going to be talking about the mathematics of lasagna. So to start off, we'll, we'll st talk about the, the cube rule of food. So I'm going to leave with a question. What is a sandwich? Two pieces of bread? A filling? Um, the Oxford English Dictionary defines it as two slices of bread enclosing a filling, for example, meat, cheese, or fish. But there are some edge cases. Are hot dogs sandwiches? Um, so here we can see three very happy sandwiches and uh, a hot dog experiencing existential dread about whether or not it is a sandwich. Um, so the state of New York says yes, hot dogs are sandwiches, um, or at least according to their tax code they are. Um, and someone came up with uh, an alignment chart to try and bring order to the universe. So maybe you can see yourself in here. Maybe you're an ingredient purist and a structure purist. You believe everything, um, only BLTs or similar are sandwiches. Or maybe you're a radical anarchist and, and you think Pop-Tarts are sandwiches. Um, so this was aimed to help, but it, it did not help. Um, people became very upset about this. Supposedly it ended a marriage. I don't know, hopefully not. Um, but then phosphatide came along and enlightened the world. Um, so they, they came up with the cube rule of food, which allows you to identify what you're eating. So this is their, their diagram. You can see it's for identifying dishes based on where the starch locations are. So for example, just at the bottom is toast, top and bottom is sandwich, and so on and so forth. So um, we can now say in a, a more formal sense that two foodstuffs are isomorphic under the cube rule of food if and only if the location of their starch content as mapped onto the cube are the same. So this is interesting because it actually partitions the set of all foodstuffs into equivalence classes based on the location of their starch content. And within these equivalence classes, we can refer to foodstuffs interchangeably. So for example, we could say a slice of toast is pizza. Um, so let's go into some examples. First, we have toast. You can see just starch at the bottom. So this is the toast equivalence class. And some examples of toast are pizza, nigiri sushi, and a slice of pumpkin pie. Because you, you can kind of see, if you flatten out a slice of pumpkin pie, it, it's just starch at the bottom. So on to the next one, sandwiches at, at the, the t starch at the top and the bottom. So we can then see some examples are a quesadilla and Victoria sponge cake are both sandwiches. And we can also see that hot dogs, in fact, aren't sandwiches because they, they wrap around. They're, they're not at the top and the bottom. So that answers that question. Um, tacos. So this is the, the equivalence class of tacos. Hot dogs are tacos, not sandwiches. Um, Subway sandwiches, which are uncut, are uh, tacos. And a slice of pie is a taco on its side. So like a slice of pie, it's kind of like that. And if you rotate it, it's a taco. Cool. Um, we'll go a bit quicker now. Sushi, all four sides, like a roll. Um, so enchiladas, falafels, and pigs in blankets are examples of sushi. Um, quiche, so that's everything except the top is starch. So a cheesecake, deep dish pizza is in fact quiche. So this might upset some Chicago people, but um, it's a quiche. And uh, a soup bread bowl is, in fact, quiche. And finally, calzone. So everywhere around is starch. So some examples of calzone are a whole pie rather than a slice, a burrito, or dumplings. So is, is this enough? Um, for these groupings to be equivalence classes, their union must cover the entire set. And we can actually see this isn't true. So for example, um, if you've got a foodstuff which no starch in, like a salad, it's not in any of the groupings. So to address this, we need to add a couple more equivalence classes to capture the foods which don't conform to our admittedly beautiful system. So as we mentioned, salad, this has no starch anywhere, um, so nothing in the cube. And some examples of salad are steak, chocolate, and soup, which is just a wet salad. Um, and on to nachos. So nachos is kind of a final equivalence class. It's a bit of a catch-all for everything. It's if there's starch distributed through anywhere, then it's a nacho. So some examples are a salad with croutons and poutine. So the cheese curd is the non-starch, and the chips are the starch. And finally, we can think about cake. So this isn't really an uh, equivalence class. Um, it, it's more a grouping, generally. But if you've got um, more layers than a sandwich, like three or more, you could say uh, a Big Mac or a stack of pancakes. These are cakes. Cool. So now, is this enough? Um, I, I don't know how you'd actually prove this is enough. I guess 
Uh, if you kind of take a generous view of equivalence class membership, it's probably enough. Like if you say nachos are a bit of a catch-all, that probably works. But yeah, but this, is, this is good. So now, a bit of a, a left turn to a brief introduction to group theory. So intuitively, we can think of a group as an algebraic structure which consists of both a set of items and an operation which combines two of the elements to form a third element. Um, more formally, we can say a group is defined of a set of elements G and a binary operation blob which maps two elements in the set G to another element also in the set G. And a, a couple of properties have to hold here. So closure, which is the result of a binary operation, is also in the set if the inputs are in the set. Associativity, which is kind of saying the order in which you um, do the operation doesn't matter. So like A blob B blob C is the same result as A blob B blob C. And there's an identity element. So this is saying that there's an element which, no matter what you blob it with and how you blob it, you end up with the same thing. And an inverse element. Um, so if you blob something with its inverse or vice versa, you get to the identity. Cool. So, so that's a group. Um, what if some of these properties don't hold? So what if, say, invertibility doesn't hold? Then it's not a group. It's actually a monoid. And if identity doesn't hold either, then it's a semi-group and so on and so forth, and then we have this fun diagram um, of all of the things it can be. So why are groups interesting? Um, they have many applications in the real world. We can use them to model many physical phenomena, so like crystals, hydrogen atoms, three of the four known fundamental forces in the universe. I guess that probably makes them fairly important. Um, public key cryptography, so making sure your computer's kind of secure, and many more things, as um, this may be foreshadowing. Cool. On to the final part, the most important part, defining lasagna. OK, so I, much like Garfield, love lasagna. Um, and this is a, a beautiful slice of lasagna. It looks really tasty. But then this is the kind of the key result. So if you take a slice of lasagna and you cut it in half and stack the two pieces, one atop the other, it's still lasagna. I think this is really cool. This is kind of the, the key result which we're going to base the rest of this talk off. Um, so then we can now ask the question, does lasagna form a group? So if we say the, the, gr the group set G is the set of containing all lasagnas with a non-negative number of layers, so like for the n layer lasagnas for non-negative n, and we say our binary operation is stacking two lasagnas one atop the other, the stacking operation, this looks like it, it could form a group. So now to check this, we're going to check the four properties of groups. So closure, associativity, identity element, and inverse element. So is lasagna closed under the stacking operation? Yes. We, we, we've agreed if you stack two lasagnas on top of the other, the result is still lasagna. Um, is lasagna associative under the stacking operation? Um, yes. So the order in which you do the kind of a binary stacking operation doesn't actually matter. You still end up with uh, the same number of layers in the end. Um, is there an identity element for the stacking operation? Maybe this is a bit more tricky, but actually, yes. Um, consider the empty lasagna or the empty plate, a lasagna with no layers. If you stack lasagna on the empty plate, it's the same lasagna. So yeah, it does have an identity. And finally, does it have an inverse element under stacking? And actually, no, it doesn't. So by counterexample, if you have a lasagna, there's nothing you could stack on top of a lasagna such that you get an empty plate. So then it's not a group, but, but what is it? Um, so it's not a group, but we do have inversibility. So in fact, lasagna is a monoid under the stacking operation. Um, but crucially, it's not a monad because it is not in the category of endofunctors. So we can write some Haskell code to kind of express lasagna as a monoid. So um, we define a new type kind of over the, the integer type, which derives some things. And then we can say the semigroup of lasagna, which is just defining the operation, which is associative, um, is the same as adding up layers, kind of stacking layers. And we, we're using sections and a nice Haskell syntax sugar for this. And then we can define lasagna as a monoid on top of a semigroup by saying the identity element, m empty, is the empty lasagna, the zero lasagna, the empty plate. And now if we use this, we can see um, th this works. In, in Haskell, we, we can stack lasagna. So this can now extend the cube rule of food. We know that lasagna is a monoid, and we can use this to say salad is isomorphic to the identity element, the empty plate, because there's no starch there. 
Pizza is isomorphic to the single layer of a, a lasagna monoid. Perhaps we could call it like a lasagne, just a single slice of lasagna. And sandwiches are isomorphic to the double layer element in the monoid. But th these are all pretty sad lasagnas. I don't know. I, I don't like two layer lasagnas. So in fact, lasagna is a rigorous definition of cake. Um, so a number of layers of starch going upwards, we, we can say, th this is actually a monoid. This is lasagna. Cool. So yeah, now we can see in these pictures, salad, toast, sandwiches, and triple layer cakes. These are all types of lasagna, um, because they're, they're parts of this group, um, this, or this monoid, should I say, and in this set. Awesome. Um, why is this useful? It isn't. Um, but I think it's funny, and maybe you did too. Um, so thanks for listening, and I refuse to answer any questions.